If we recollect the cartoon shows we used to watch in our childhood and even the ones which are broadcast today, we would rarely find a cartoon show the story of which revolves around a female protagonist. And just as in the case of cartoons, the same unevenness is reflected in the world of cinema or literature. So, it is argued that most works of fiction present the world to us from the perspective of a man. The Bechdel test is an interesting tool to measure the representation of women characters in fictional stories. So, in order for a film to pass the Bechdel test, it must fulfill all of these three requirements. It must have at least two female characters in it who have names. The two female characters must have at least one on-screen conversation with each other where they talk about something other than a man or about marriage. This test points out that when two male characters have an on-screen conversation, they are shown to talk about many topics, but when two female characters have an on-screen conversation, they are generally shown to talk about either a man or about marriage. Although the test has its limitations and is not completely accurate because there are films like for example Gravity which don't pass this test because the film itself has very few characters in it. But what the Bechdel test is trying to emphasize is that in most films the female characters exist only to support the story of the male characters without having any inner life of their own. A more accurate study is the Johansson analysis by Mary Ann Johansson, which evaluates the representation of women in films by adding or subtracting points based on a number of factors. The basic representation factor takes into consideration not just the number of women in the film, but also how they are portrayed on the screen. Whether the female characters in the film have depth in their personalities or do they exist only to support the story of the male protagonist? Agency According to this analysis, the film may have a woman as its central character, but it is not enough if the character lacks agency. That is, does she control her own life or is she shown as a helpless victim of circumstances? For example, the damsel in distress theme which is used in many films where the story revolves around a woman, but she is shown as a weak, helpless victim waiting for a hero to rescue her from the villain. So in such stories, it is argued that the woman is shown more helpless only to make the savior appear as more heroic. It also takes into account whether the film supports the idea of a woman being in charge of her life or does it suggest that power and leadership are not appropriate for women to have. The term male gaze was coined by the British film critic Laura Mulvey, who believes that most films portray the world from a male perspective where women are seen as objects for the pleasure of the male viewers. And hence, most of the female characters in films don't have much depth in their personality because the focus of most films is more on the woman's physical appearance than on her inner qualities. The fourth point takes into consideration if the woman in the story is seen as a person more than her gender or does she exist only as a wife or a mother to someone in the film without having any inner life of her own, that is, without any wishes, ambitions and views on life. The Johansson analysis and the Bechdel test finds its inspiration from the writings of Virginia Woolf. One of her essays, A Room of One's Own, published in 1929, sheds light on the difficulties faced by women writers in the societies of the past. She discusses the idea that if William Shakespeare had a sister with the same imagination and talent for writing, the society back then would not have given her the same opportunity to flourish her talent as she would not have been sent to school and thus would be deprived of education and so would be deprived of the opportunity and support which William Shakespeare got to develop his creative potential.
So coming to the present, just as our dreams are a reflection of our subconscious self, we can also say that the films and literature of every society are a reflection of the society's collective subconscious. So it is important that we become aware of the influence of films and fiction have on the way we think and see the world. Tell us how you found the video in the comments below. If in case you liked the video, do share it so that it reaches more people. If you wish to remain updated with more of such videos, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.